Welcome to Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee, a weekly program exploring important trends in health. Dark mint, midnight berry, mocha taboo, exotic beverages or flavored cigarettes. It's hard to tell these days. Tobacco companies have been using flavor in their cigarettes for decades. Most recently, they've attempted to supercharge their sales by marketing these to women and young smokers. Not wanting to be outdone, the alcohol industry has now caught on. If it works for nicotine, it should work for alcohol, right? Again, women are deliberately targeted. What's going on here? Let's start with a few facts. Between 1999 and 2004, alcohol consumption amongst American and British women between the legal drinking age and the age of 24 has increased by more than 30 percent. That's quite a statistic, especially when you consider that these are challenging times for the alcohol industry. It's growing at just 1% a year worldwide. Alcohol consumption overall increased by only 1% in the United States between 1999 and 2004, and by 5% in the UK. And in other countries, alcohol consumption actually decreased by 8% in Germany and 6% in France. Under such pressure, it's no surprise that marketing programs have expanded and become more innovative and more targeted. Why are women being singled out? Because times are changing. Women are more affluent and independent than ever before, and they're starting families later in life. This means more disposable income and more time to socialize. Plus, many have already acquired a taste for alcohol after four years on a college campus. The marketing is pervasive, whether you're watching a small screen or the large, reading a magazine or surfing the internet, you'll often see women holding a beverage, predictably fizzy, fruity, and alcoholic. From Carrie Bradshaw to Bridget Jones, many of our modern heroines are also associated with fun and passion and glamour. Product marketers tend to connect the dots. Take Anheuser-Busch's new entrant, Peels. Peels is a line of alcoholic fruit drinks in flavors like blueberry pomegranate and strawberry passion fruit. In a recent promotion, the company invited women's magazine editors to a Manhattan spa for free manicures and facials and, of course, free drinks. It's all good fun and good business, too. The industry itself is young and hip. Consider that alcohol spiked soda pop, the parent of today's more sophisticated offerings, didn't even appear in the UK until the mid-1990s. In just over a decade, more than 80 new varieties have appeared in the UK with sales last year of more than $2 billion. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Called Alka Pops, sales worldwide in 2005 were 23 billion up 300% since 1997. American Medical Association President Ed Hill had it right when he said, quotes, a lot of it has to do with the very successful and sophisticated advertising and marketing by the alcohol industry. A 2004 AMA study of 12 to 18 year olds showed that substantially more girls had an alka pop in the prior six months than boys and 12 to 18 year old girls consume more of all types of alcohol than boys. For those in the alcohol sales business, the economics are pretty clear and the game plan is well tested. Potential targets should be aware. Become familiar with their plans and don't let yourself be vulnerable. Alcohol marketers are likely to follow the tobacco industry's playbook by promoting their products as smooth, flavor-filled, mild, and refined. They want to get ahead of the echo boomer curve. 10 to 27-year-olds will soon dominate all consumer markets. They'll be following the numbers, offering lots of choice, and putting their money behind the leaders. If flavored vodkas are most popular, you'll surely see them in the hands of popular on-screen characters. Don't be lured in by cute packaging either. Case in point, 
Cocktails by Jen. They're flavored vodka martinis that are 17% alcohol. These drinks come in bottles adorned with metal charms. A high heel shoe, a purse, a diamond ring or a heart. Precious little keepsake charms? I don't think so. I hope you won't be fooled either. For Health Politics, I'm Mike McGee. Thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee. If you are accessing Health Politics with a portable device, please visit our homepage, healthpolitics.com, for more information on this topic and many others. If you are watching Health Politics on the Internet, please visit the links below for additional information. Download the transcript and slides to share with friends or colleagues, or use the discussion guide to help generate conversations in the classroom. If you are not yet a Health Politics subscriber and would like to begin receiving a weekly email to keep you up to date on our latest programs, please click on subscribe to Health Politics above and enter your email address. Again, thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee.